We try and find cars that just exude character and history and story in their patina and their finishes and their condition, but leave that sort of as-found vibe and then try and hide as much modern mechanical goodness as we can fit. Jonathan Ward made his name by building and restoring museum-worthy off-roaders under the Icon and TLC banners. But when he shifted gears and turned his attention to the unlikeliest of automotive outcasts, he mashed up his love of abandoned rust buckets with his fondness for sophisticated mechanicals, creating rat rod Q-ships with clapped out exteriors and totally modern underpinnings. Come along as we explore and drive what just might be the ultimate automotive paradox, Jonathan's personal daily driver, this deceptively complex derelict. We started doing these vintage one-off builds and we call them derelicts because the whole idea of it is we want to liberate the buyer to use it, drive it, flog it, have fun with it. It's not a trailer queen. So we really wanted to stay consistent with the idea behind Icon of like vintage aesthetic with modern mechanical and engineering. Car enthusiasts can be broken down into two basic types. Those who want the latest, greatest new cars and others who appreciate the classics. But Jonathan Ward's derelicts focus on that sometimes slippery intersection between old and new, where some see rust and dirt, Jonathan sees magic. I think 10 years ago, this business would not have been possible. But the convergence of reverse engineering and low volume manufacturing techniques, I think we're on the cusp of a whole new era of car geek manufacturing design. So that's when we started Icon, was to really see, can we do that? And uh, we never looked back. I guess I'm a car geek who avoided getting a real job and turned my passion into a business. So my wife Jamie and I started our first company, which was TLC, focused on vintage Land Cruisers. And then over the years, I had this idea kind of brewing in the back of my head. And after I did the FJ Cruiser prototypes for Toyota and I saw the direction they were taking that design, it really left me yearning to realize my own version of the original Land Cruiser. We try and find cars that just exude character and history and story in their patina that aren't complete rat rust buckets, but leave that sort of as found vibe and then try and hide as much modern mechanical goodness as we can fit. Once Jonathan gets his hands on them, a heavily patinaed car that looks like scrapyard fodder becomes completely reimagined for its second life. Stuff like this wheel, you know, it's so tempting to take this wheel and send it out to the guy who restores it and makes it look brand new. But, you know, it came to us from an original owner who's 96 years old. Why did he put this rope here? I don't know, but I like the mystery of that. So I like these cracks and the stress marks. And when you're in the sunlight, it just kind of burns and radiates. It's just romantic. So this would have originally been for the stock AM radio speaker. But it's actually going to work perfect for us because this back mesh will create uh, a vector file of that and then have it laser cut in stainless but bigger holes. And then we'll hide the two primary AC vents behind that so you won't know, you know, won't have some ugly billet modern or plastic vent there. We'll just simply repurpose that. And then the two outboard vents for the AC will handcraft and bury under the dash. So you get the functionality, but they don't screw up the intention of the, the this original design flow. With the speedometer, because we want to keep it derelict, we didn't monkey with the face of it at all, so we left the original chrome. We cleaned all the original surfaces underneath the crystal, polished it, and then you'll notice it has a modern odometer. So that's the only giveaway to the fact that we actually gutted the original and stuffed a modern VDO electronic controlled speedometer and uh, LEDs and all the signal outputs we need. Find the right car, get it in here. We take the body off of the chassis and fix the body. Then we use 3D capture technology to scan with lasers. So for example, this one has a Art Morrison independent front, triangulated four link rear. We're running a strange nine inch rear with a strange fine spline axles. And then we're running the Wildwood six piston calipers in the front, four piston rear, 16 inch rotors, 15 inch rotors, and an ABS master 
and a 20 to 1 ratio Flaming River steering rack. I really like to kind of straddle that edge between performance and refinement. So this is running a 6.1 Hemi SRT8 from a 2011 and we left it pretty much dead nuts factory other than I built some custom stainless headers and a higher flow stainless exhaust system. It's running Dynaflow twin stainless mufflers so it's quiet. It makes it easier to live with but then when you really nail it, it you know the sounds what you want it to be and it really comes alive. So Jonathan, you've told me about what's behind this car and what the underpinnings are made of and how it kind of all comes together mechanically. And I gotta say that driving it really does make a weird connection between the past and the present. Behind this huge steering wheel and these old gauges and these just totally flat seats and all these elements of car history, when I push the accelerator, it's a very foreign kind of disconnected feeling from what I'm experiencing. Yeah, it's pretty counterintuitive to how it looks. There's like no preconceived notions about it or judgments made. It's just fun. It's either invisible or it makes people smile. All these modern cars not to the past, but this is the real deal. This is actually an old car. And yeah. it's, it's kind of fun to think of it that way and that I'm driving an old car, but I don't have to worry about it breaking down. I don't have to worry about a lumpy idle. I don't have to worry about, you know, gas smells and all the things that you typically associate with, with cars of this era. Nothing but a big American V8 would work with this car. Under yeah. the hood. It's just mated to the personality genetically, I think. Yeah, totally. That's fun too for us. Like we really try and keep it a Chevy and a Chevy or whatever. So when we're building this, obviously the modern Hemi powertrain was a no brainer match for it. I think this is an amazing commute machine. I'm just, I, you know, so many of your cars are, are special occasion cars or kind of like, they're usable, but they're, they're a little bit precious. Yeah. And, and the usability of this, you know, I could see myself driving this to work every day. Yeah. I could see myself on the freeway doing kind of like day to day things. That, yeah. Not being afraid to just pounce on it and womp on it. You know? Speaking of engine, can I nail it? Nail it. Oh, <laughs> nice. A bit of tire spin there. It is a hot rod. Yeah, so if you keep your foot out of it, you'd never know it. It's got good manners and it's mellow. But when you want it and you stomp on it, it really comes alive. It's so much fun. I mean, the torque of these modern Hemi's is just a perfect match for big old boats like this. It works out really good. So the ride feels a little bit bouncy and hunkered down. Do you have an adjustable suspension or how do you manage that? The Alkins are uh, two stage up down tunable and then the stance is manipulable with the adjustable coils. I have it set pretty low and nasty so that I can drive it a little rough and ready. But like it depends on the client how they're going to use it. We'll generally try and get a feel for that and set up the suspension profile to match how they're going to use it. So the steering feels really light in that kind of mid-century big American car way. Is that intentional? Yeah, I mean, we, in some applications, usually when it's due to a fit limitation, we'll run one of the modern electric racks, like the E-Pass from Ford. But this is running like a conventional rack and pinion setup. This has a 20 to one ratio, which is just my personal preference. So some guys will want a more aggressive, like a 15 to one, but to me, that's kind of twitchy. This car is fun to like, put your arm back on the sofa, kick back one hand on the wheel, and the 20 to one's pretty amiable for that. Door hinges and door catches and latches of these vintage cars are a weak spot that we've learned to spend more time with. So now like, we'll take all the hinges apart, disassemble them, use a hardened steel inner rod with impregnated bronze bushings so we get all the slop out of the hinge. And then a lot of times the strikers, you can't find any new old stock inventory. So we'll CAD map and then CNC those in stainless to get the doors to function. Because sometimes like on this car, for example, the driver's door, I didn't do any of that hinge stuff. This is actually the car that I learned that for my clients, I should do those extra steps. Do you think you do this because you're so used to aiming for just the perfect aesthetically finished car oh, totally. that you just have to get this out of your system? Definitely. I mean, it's, it's the creative end of it. It's the sort of comical artistic freedom to do some of the really creative stuff that we do on them. 
And yeah, I'm tired of like restoring the hell out of something and then I'm even afraid to like test drive it in earnest because it's so perfect and nothing is ever perfect. Mm -hmm. So as a builder and as a designer, there's always some element on the car somewhere that is up my butt. And these, you can kind of get past that and it's just, it's, just it's, it's about the collective vibe and experience of it. So it's just, it's a little more liberating. I mean, to me, this is like the ultimate automotive insider's joke. I mean, nobody knows what's under the hood of this car. Yeah, I mean, it definitely takes an acquired palette. Like, I think a lot of our customer base are like, yeah, okay, but they just don't get it. So you're either that tweaked of a car geek that you get it, or you just think I'm a complete moron. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely would say that my clients with the derelicts are having a hell of a lot more fun. Higher around. mileage, I'm assuming. Oh yeah, way more mileage, way more story and experience. It's fun to beat on it. So what kind of responses do you get from, from surrounding traffic when you're driving this thing? Oh, it's either yin or it's yang. So you either get people looking at you like you're just crusty, gutter, bum, how dare you with that, I'm gonna need a tetanus shot. They'll give you like a wide berth because they're not sure you're gonna be able to stop in time or whatever. Or sometimes like people, they'll see their faces light up because like reminds them of some bit of their own life history or something from their childhood. It's never really like a negative feel other than like, you know, the new car fancy guy looks at you like you poor bum. But you know, it's it's usually warm. Someday fuzzies. you'll be afford, you're able to afford yeah, a real car, right? Yeah, someday you might get right? a new car. <laughs> My favorite's when guys will stop me, like, "Nice wagon. When are you gonna finish it?" And it's never a short conversation to go, "No, I'm done." And they're like, "No, really. What color are you gonna paint it? It's like Red?" A, no, like, you oh, have no, no idea. <laughs> do not understand. Don't even yeah. just don't even go there. I've given up trying to convert them. People either get it or they don't. It just doesn't end, does it? Yeah, it doesn't end, I guess. It's part of the sickness, right? <laughs> At least you know. Yeah. Where do derelicts live in the automotive universe? With one foot planted in the past and the other discreetly tucked in the present, these four-wheeled misfits satisfy a small sliver of car enthusiasts. But for anti-status seekers who relish that seemingly impossible combination of character and convenience, derelicts hit that niche with laser-like focus. They're certainly not for everyone, but if you're a deep-pocketed enthusiast seeking both patina and reliability, Jonathan Ward might be able to cook up a ride that's just right for you. For Car and Driver, I'm Bassam Watson.